Hello children, today's topic, the language of chemistry. Among the thousands and thousands of languages that we have all around the world, chemistry is one of the most interesting, easy and a helpful language for us. No matter in which country you study, the language of chemistry does not change here. And that's how it's so important. To understand this language, let us see a few concepts. Let's see the first thing. What is an element? An element is a pure form of matter which cannot be decomposed into simpler substances. An atom, the next definition, an atom is a, the smallest particle of an element which may or may not exist independently, but it can take part in chemical reaction. Now why did they say may or may not exist independently? It's because some atoms are in monoatomic state that is it, a particular element is made up of all single atoms there are elements with like gases hydrogen chlorine nitrogen which are made up of two atoms of the particular element combined together that is oxygen is made up of o2 two atoms of oxygen combined to give you oxygen molecules these are called diatomic elements. We also have different polyatomic elements. The next concept is of a molecule. So what is a molecule? So a molecule is the smallest part that has the capability to exist independently. The molecule of an element exhibits all the properties of that element. Molecules could be representing an element or molecules could also be representing a compound. So what is a compound? Compound is when two or more atoms of the same or different element combine in a fixed proportion. Uh, initially when elements were discovered they were given different symbols. They are represented in the table shown here. For example, hydrogen was represented with a dot in a circle, a carbon as a black dot, oxygen as a circle and so on. It became difficult with more and more elements being found out to just symbolize them. The better way of naming them was to give them some symbols. In this chart we see some elements which were based on their Latin names like gold, the symbol for gold is AU because its Latin name is Aurum. For silver, it is AG as the Latin name is Argentum and so on. So some of the elements had been named by their German names or their Latin names. Let us see symbols of some common elements. Magnesium, Mg, Aluminium, Al. Calcium, Ca, Chromium, Cr and so on. So what is a symbol? A symbol is the short form that stands for the atom of a specific element or the abbreviation used for the name of the element. Each element is denoted by a symbol which is usually the first letter of its name in English or Latin, maybe even German. And it is written in capital. Example, sulfur, an element, is denoted by the symbol S. Similarly, hydrogen is denoted by the symbol H in capitals. However, when the first letter of one or more element is same, then the elements are denoted by two letters. The first letter is written in capital, while the second one is written in small can also say the first letter is written in the first order while the second letter is written in the second order. Example Mg, M is capital, G is small. Al, A is capital or of the first order and L is of the second order and so on. Valency. Once you know the symbols of elements, it is important to understand the valency and to know the valencies. So valency of an element is the measure of its combining power with other elements. 
Now another important definition that is an ion, I-O-N, ion. An ion is a positively or negatively charged atom or a group of atoms which are formed by the loss or gain of electron or electrons by an atom or group of atoms. Like for example, sodium loses one electron to form a sodium ion. Sodium cation. Magnesium loses two electrons to form a magnesium ion. Mg with a valency 2 plus. So positive ions are known as cations. The elements with one, two or three electrons in their outermost shell are usually metals. Out of the elements that have four electrons in the outermost orbit, carbon is a non-metal, silicon and germanium are metalloids and the rest are metals. Elements with five, six or seven electrons in their outermost shells are normally non-metals. Let us see negative ions. Negative ions are known as anions. Now it depends upon the number of electrons in the outermost shell. So when elements have one electron, it has a positive one valency. When they have two electrons in the outermost shell, they have a two positive valency. When they have three electrons in the outermost shell, it, the valency is three. Same for four. When they have five electrons in the outermost shell, the valency is three minus. When it is six electrons in the outermost shell, the valency is two. It's two minus. And when they have seven electrons in the outermost shell, the valency is one minus. Elements with eight electrons in the outermost shell have zero valency. That is, they do not react. So valency is defined as a combining capacity of an atom or of a radical. The valency of an element or of a radical is the number of hydrogen atoms that will combine with or displace one atom of that element or radical. Like for example, in the molecule of HCl, one hydrogen can combine with chlorine. When there is oxygen in water, in the formation of water, two hydrogens are required to combine with oxygen. So here the valency of oxygen is 2, 2 minus because it receives electrons. For ammonia, it is 3, that is nitrogen has a valency of 3. Hence, 3 atoms of hydrogen are required. The next concept we have is variable valency. Certain elements exhibit more than one valency. That is, they show variable valency. Now, why does this happen? It happens because some atoms of elements sometimes lose one or more electron than they are present in the valence shell. That is, there is a loss of electrons from the penultimate shell too. That is the second last shell also loses a few electrons or one electron and therefore such elements are said to have a variable valency. In this chart we see some examples of variable valency. So iron has two valencies. Iron with valency 2 is referred to as ferrous and iron with valency 3 is referred to as ferric. Copper with valency 1 is referred to as cuprous and copper with valency 2 is referred to as cupric. Mercury with valency 1, mercurous and mercury with valency 2 is called mercuric and so on. Now let us see what is the significance of a molecular formula. The molecular formula of a compound has quantitative significance that is it represents both the molecule and the molecular mass of the compound. The respective numbers of different atoms present in one molecule of a compound. The ratio of the respective masses of elements present in the compound. So from one molecular formula the information that we can get is number of atoms present different kinds of atoms present, what's the ratio and so on. Like for example, if we talk of carbon dioxide, 
the molecule of carbon dioxide CO2 the formula CO2 so each molecule contains one carbon atom joined by two chemical bonds with two oxygen atoms that is altogether three atoms one of carbon and two oxygen atoms the molecular mass of carbon dioxide is 44 it is given by the atomic mass of one carbon atom and atomic mass of two oxygen atoms that is 12 plus 16 plus 16 let us see what are radicals radicals is an atom or a group of atom of the same or different element that behaves as a single unit with a positive or a negative charge we see some common electrovalent positive radicals in this screen these are very important for you you have to learn them by the formula ammonium NH4 with plus 1, gold Au plus 1, silver Ag plus 1 and so on. All these radicals have to be learnt. The screen shows us list of negative ions or the negative radicals are also called as acid radicals. How do we write the chemical formula? The following steps are taken while writing chemical formula. Write the symbols side by side. Basic radical is written first and then the acid radical. That is the positive radical is generally written before the negative radical. Then we write the valency of each atom on top of its symbol. The third step is we ignore the signs, the positive or the negative signs for the valency. And we divide the numbers by the highest common factor to get the simplest ratio. It is a simple way of cross multiplication. Then the interchange the valencies that is also called as cross valency. Write the interchange valency numbers to the lower right of the radical. If the radical is a group of atom that has valency number more than one, enclose it within brackets. Let us see the examples. In this case, the compound magnesium chloride. Mg has a valency 2 while Cl has valency minus 1. So when we write a cross valency, we will write it as Mg with valency 2, Cl with valency 1. Now we cross multiply that. The valency of chlorine comes under Mg while valency of Mg comes under chlorine. So the chemical formula here we ignore the number 1 whatever is written. So it's written as MgCl2 and not Mg1Cl2. Uh, let's see the second example of calcium oxide. Calcium has valency 2 and oxygen has valency 2 as well. When we cross them the valencies get reduced because we are taking the HCF the common factor. So 1 calcium and 1 oxygen. So cancelling the common factor, the valency or the formula will be CaO. Please note, we do not write the number 1 and hence it is not Ca1O1, it is CaO. Kindly note children, you need to write C capital. For calcium, A will be in the small or the second order and O is capital again. Let's see it for aluminium hydroxide. Aluminium's valency is 3. Hydroxide's valency is minus 1. When we are writing the cross valencies, 1 will come below aluminium and 3 will come below OH. OH here is a hydroxide radical. Since there are two elements that form the radical hydroxide, OH is written in brackets. And the number 3, that is the valency of aluminium, comes outside the bracket for OH. And hence the final formula for aluminium hydroxide will be Al in the brackets OH three times. For sodium metaaluminate, sodium symbol is Na with plus one valency. Metaaluminate is AlO2 with one minus valency. When we cross multiply, when we write the valencies Na1, AlO2, the whole bracket one. Since both the numbers, both the valencies are 1, the final formula will come as 
NaAlO2 and for sodium aluminate the symbol for sodium Na aluminate is AlO3 here the valency is 3 minus in cross valency it will be sodium Na3 times with aluminate AlO3 once so the final formula Na3AlO3 so I hope that you can write any formula for any compound from now onwards